Hi there, my name is Ms. Townsend and I am your professor for elementary statistics. In this video, I'm going to introduce our first lesson and tell you a little bit about the PowerPoints that you're going to be looking at um, all semester. So let me share my screen with you. Okay, so here's the PowerPoint for our first lesson. Now, lesson 1.1 is about statistical and critical thinking. Um, I just wanted you to know um, that these notes are provided by Pearson. Those are, that is the publisher, excuse me, of our textbook, which is right here, to accompany the essentials of statistics text. But then I modified them. Um, and I wanted to tell you exactly how I modified them um, and what you can expect and what I expect these to be used for. Um, so on this second slide, you see um, our textbook, sixth edition. I highly recommend that you get a hard copy of that book because it's very readable. And then I wanted to tell you about how these slides were prepared. To prepare these slides, I did the following. First, I downloaded the Pearson PowerPoint that's associated with lesson 1.1 in our text. Then I added graphics where I thought it was appropriate. They had a lot of text, but not a lot of pictures. So I tried to find graphics online. And for, most, for the most part, that just involved doing an internet search. So I'm just Googling things um, or using DuckDuckGo to browse. Um, I'm downloading images from the internet and I have linked to the sources um, in the PowerPoint. So if you hover over any image in this PowerPoint, you will see um, a link to the original source. Um, and also the web address where I found the image is in the alternate text for that image. And so that way you know where I got all these images from. But I added those so that um, the PowerPoint would be a little bit more engaging. Um, and then I added and deleted some text. Now I added some text, I deleted some text, and I kept some text, even though um, your speech teacher at TCC would probably tell you that there's way too much text on this page for this to be a decent visual aid. Um, and he or she would be absolutely right but we're using this PowerPoint, excuse me, for more than one purpose. So I want to tell you why I added some text, why I deleted other text, and why I kept some text in there when it made the slide unnecessarily wordy. So first I deleted redundant text. So if I was about to say something about some text in my presentation to you in a video like this, um, I deleted that part. Um, if I'm just saying it out loud and it's sort of transitional words that really don't help you as far as your notes are concerned, I got rid of that. Um, but that redundant text is in the original Pearson PowerPoint, which you can download from our Blackboard site if you choose to. Um, that would make the PowerPoint slides more complete and it would, yeah, basically replace me narrating and talking to you about the material. So you could watch or read, excuse me, those slides instead, or you could watch the videos where the deleted, um, or I deleted the text that was redundant. And then I also added text for emphasis. So sometimes uh, the Pearson publisher um, would just outline things and they really wouldn't emphasize the point. So I'm gonna try to emphasize points by highlighting things, changing some colors, and then of course, um, through my speaking voice as I describe what, are, what you see on the slides. And lastly, I left some of the wordier text when it might be helpful for your notes. Now, most of the time when you're watching somebody do a PowerPoint presentation, you really don't want to have somebody reading the PowerPoint presentation to you. Um, it would be better if I just put the word on the screen and then I defined it. But if you are having that experience at home, you would have to keep up with everything I'm saying, take excellent notes, maybe even pause the video. And I don't want you to have to do that. Um, my goal for these notes is that you'd, or for these slides is that you'd be able to use them to accompany uh, your notes and your studying. So with that in mind, I left some of the wordier text in there when I thought it might be helpful for you as you're studying and preparing for. Um, you're preparing to do your homework and also preparing for exams. Now, the way I envisioned you using these slides was as a substitute for face-to-face -face lecture. So you're gonna have the video, and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the slides and I'm going to subdivide it into a number of little pieces, each one corresponding to a learning outcome. And then you can watch that little piece as a substitute for that piece of the lecture that you would have had if you'd taken a face-to-face -face version of this class. 
And then I'm thinking of these also as detailed notes, which is why I'm leading, leaving the wordier definitions on the slides. Now, you might want to supplement the slides that I give you with the original Pearson slides because they fill in all the gaps. They fill in all the things that I'm saying, but haven't been written on the slide themselves. Um, or you can just watch this video and download my slides and annotate my slides. So take notes as you're watching it. Um, and then you'd pretty much get the same experience that you would have in a face-to-face -face class with me. So that's what I was envisioning. Now this introduction to statistics, excuse me, this is a uh, chapter, chapter one, uh, covers three sections or three lessons. And our first section is section 1.1 in the text, which is called um, statistical and critical thinking. The lesson outcomes for the statistical and critical thinking lesson or section of the book are to define essential terminology. So we really want to get on the same page about those important terms in the statistics class. I'm going to mention populations and samples. Um, I'm going to mention, let's see, statistical significance and practical significance. And my goal is that whenever I say those things, you're going to know exactly what we're talking about. And in order to do that, we need to define some terms. So we're going to start by defining some essential terms in this course. Then we're going to outline how to conduct a statistical study. Triola, that's the author of our textbook, he has a, a three-step process that he, he um, articulates for conducting a study, and then each of those steps comprise, are, are comprised by lots of other little pieces. So for example, for the first one, you're supposed to prepare to conduct a study by considering the context and the source um, and the way that that sample was collected in the first place. Um, so that's part of preparation. So we're going to outline that, um, that three-step process that Triola um, outlines for us in our book. And then we're going to identify potential pitfalls in data analysis. Now you will see that all of these videos are very consistent with our text, but I've just changed things a little bit. I've modified things a little bit so that um, it'll be easier for you to understand. Or um, I've basically modified it in a way that would make it easier for me to understand uh, if I were a student in this class. Um, so that's the goal of lesson or lesson one, uh, the uh, section 1.1 of our text of our course. Now I'd like you to watch this video next. If you are looking at the PowerPoint, you can actually hover over this and click and it'll take you to this TED talk on YouTube. Um, he says why you should love statistics is the name of his talk. And basically, I'll, I'll, it's a spoiler. His conclusion is that we should love statistics because statistics is about us. Now, the way he describes it being about us, um, I wouldn't say that's 100% of what my understanding of statistics is, uh, but it's a big part of it. Um, the way we're going to study statistics in this class, it's going to be um, pretty much an applied statistics class. You're gonna learn essential terminology, you're going to learn how to make sense of data, we're going to start with data sets and we're going to make sense of data using some statistical tools. Um, and the reason we would want to make sense of data is to say something about ourselves, to say something about the world we live in. Um, and it's usually often about, about people, um, about social science. And I, I think that's why um, it's so important. But Alan says it better, so I will close this video and let you watch Alan's video. And then I'll see you in the next one when we'll talk about essential terminology.